Writers, especially novelists, tend to look to the rest of us like people on the fringes of society. Some maintain secretive, introspective lives, while others seem to enjoy being interviewed on talk shows. The Sunshine State is home to thousands of established writers and wannabes. In November 1995, I interviewed a North Florida novelist who was also the author of the country's best-selling textbook on the writer's craft. A heavy autumn rain is falling outside the Tallahassee home of author Janet Burroway. She and her family live in a heavily wooded neighborhood a few blocks from a lake. In the side yard is a recently completed swimming pool. It's quite a contrast from the dry southern Arizona country where Burroway spent most of her childhood. Apart from being born there, the curious fact about that is that I never felt at home there. I was willing to say by the time I was eight that this was not my home and that I wanted to go back east and that I wanted trees, trees, trees. <laughs> and so you can see that I have surrounded myself with trees and water. Nowadays, the author and her husband spend part of each year in London, where she does most of her writing, away from the telephone and other distractions. Perhaps this dual residency represents a longing for a home never found. That sense that I was not at home in Arizona has a kind of residual resonance now. I think that in some ways, what has always stuck with me is the sense that I haven't quite found my home yet and I'm continually looking for it. Janet Burroway is the author of seven novels, two children's books, and two books of poetry, plus a host of stories, articles, plays, and poems for publications worldwide. In addition, her 1982 textbook, Writing Fiction, A Guide to Narrative Craft, is currently being used in more college and university writing courses across the country than any other. Burroway says the book was written to fill a need. I wrote it because 24 years ago I came to FSU and was handed a course called Narrative Techniques and had no idea how to teach it. And I really floundered for a few years. And after I'd taught it maybe six or seven years, I thought, oh, I finally know how to do this. Since then, the book, now in its fourth edition, has been officially adopted by some 400 colleges and universities. I'm surprised and delighted by the success of it. It would now delight me if a novel sold as many copies as the textbook does. One thing Burroway students learn is that part of the foundation of any good novel is the accuracy and realism of the settings and the characters. Usually this means engaging in some form of research, especially if the story is set in a faraway place or time. Her best-selling novel, Cutting Stone, published by Houghton Mifflin and Company in 1992, begins in Baltimore, then continues in Arizona and northern Mexico in the year 1914. Writing about the Arizona desert, the author says she was able to draw on childhood memories. The kind of research that was most difficult was what daily life was like, because I write very much from an accumulation of specific detail. And I would find myself in a scene in which uh, a character was cooking dinner, and I'd think, I don't know what the stove looks like. And then I'd have to go and, and look at what the stove looked like. So much depends on uh, on getting into that research. It's, it's, it's easier to work in a modern period where you already know what the kitchen looks like. <laughs> but in researching the period of the book, Burroway says she drew on the advice of another historical novelist, Mary Lee Settle. Don't read about the period. Read stuff that was written in the period. Then you'll get the cadences and the state of mind and the feel of the objects of the period and of the vocabulary and language of the period. And that was, that was useful as well. So I read a lot of Baltimore Sun and the Dirty Gulch Gazette and the Arizona Star and <laughs> the Cattleman's Daily. <laughs> Burroway speculates on whether living in North Florida since 1972 has had an effect on her writing. There is certainly a way in which a landscape becomes an ineluctable part of you. And if you're a writer, that means that it bubbles up into the writing. Yet two of her novels, one written in 1985 and one in progress, are set not in the Sunshine State, but in nearby Georgia. I never write right in the spot where I'm living. I have to displace it a little bit to see it freshly. It occurs to me that I probably have, in both of these novels, Opening Nights and Paper, done precisely that and just nudged it over the border. We're only 30 miles from Georgia here, after all. The success of her textbook on how to write, not only among college teachers but also the general public, causes Burroway to speculate on the growing number of would-be writers, especially novelists. There are more people who want to write out there than who want to read. I think that's quite literally true. But in some ways, 
In some ways, you know, I don't mind that. The author admits to being of two minds on the subject. She says that from an editor's point of view, there are just too many people sending in too many manuscripts. But as a person of letters, she's also concerned about the pervasive influence of television on the reading public. From the point of view of the student and the citizen, we need our language and we need to use it. And we're losing it through so much television. And it is a beautiful thing that people still want to connect through the written word. And the more of it, the better. Writer and educator Janet Burroway, now working on her next novel, Paper, plus a radio adaptation of her 1985 book, Opening Nights. I'm Bill Dudley. With funds provided by the Florida Department of State Division of Cultural Affairs, this report was produced by the Florida Humanities Council.